Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on cellular medicines for inflammatory diseases brought to you by Lonza. Today, we are talking with Silvio Itescu, the chief executive of Mesoblast. Mesoblast is a global company delivering innovative therapeutic solutions to some of the world's most pressing healthcare challenges. The company's portfolio of advanced allogeneic off-the-shelf cellular medicines, which implements multifactorial modes of action, targets various inflammatory conditions with major unmet medical needs, including graft versus host disease, acute respiratory distress syndrome, advanced heart failure, and chronic low back pain. Welcome to our podcast. Um, could you summarize the Mesoblast journey in the past uh, 15 years? Sure, thank you. Um, we've built uh, on, on the back of a very uh, sophisticated technology platform um, based on mesenchymal lineage cells, a range of therapeutic products focusing on severe inflammatory conditions. Using the, the platform technology, uh, we have identified a mechanistic approach where the cells that we're working with have the ability to sense severe inflammation and when used in an inflammatory process uh, are, are able to secrete multiple factors that turn off the immune cascade responsible for the inciting inflammation. That is a, a core mechanism of action that allows us to take advantage of a very potent technology platform and target those conditions where small molecules and monoclonal antibodies have not adequately addressed the inflammatory process. And what exactly are the products that you currently have in your pipeline? Well, our first, most advanced product is called Remy Stem Cell L. That product has more than uh, uh, 1,100 patients worth of clinical data behind it, which uh, provides us with a very strong uh, history of safety and now efficacy. It has been used in a multi-dosing format in both adults and children with uh, acute graft versus host disease. It's also been used in, uh, in, in a multi-dose format in patients with severe uh, biologic refractory Crohn's disease and is being developed for a number of indications, most recently for COVID-19 acute respiratory distress syndrome. Our additional products in phase three include Rovascor for chronic heart failure, that's uh, targeting inflammatory heart failure, uh, it, which is a primary cause of progressive heart failure in patients who have failed existing therapies today. All right. Um, now let's talk about the mesenchymal lineage stem cells. What exactly are these and what is their function in the human body? So these cells are present in all of us around blood vessels in all the vascularized tissues and their role and function in these tissues throughout life is to sense inflammation through very specific receptors. They have receptors for major inflammatory cytokines. And when there is excessive inflammation in those tissues, the cells become activated and their role is to sec secrete anti-inflammatory factors that turn down the aberrant inflammation. And so they are regulators, if you like, or orchestrators of a normal immune response in all of our organs. Uh, we believe that progressive degenerative conditions like heart failure, like back pain, like immune-mediated diseases, um, in large part res result from exhaustion of these mesenchymal cells or, or um, inadequate or insufficient numbers of these mesenchymal lineage cells, and therefore replacement or, or um, um, delivery of large numbers of these cells we expect would, would then be able to manage the inflammatory process in a way that the endogenous cells cannot. All right, now about your lead product, Remy Stem Cell L, you already mentioned today that this is being also tested uh, as a treatment in the late stages of, of COVID-19. Could you, could you elaborate a bit on this and what is the current status of this project? Well, the fundamental 
mechanism of action of these cells, as I mentioned earlier, is that they are activated by multiple cytokines. So they, they have receptors for multiple cytokines, and if they find themselves in the middle of a cytokine storm, then those, those cytokines will activate the cells in a way that allows them to then switch off the immune system that has produced those cytokines in the first place. And that is a unique mechanism of action that does not hold with respect to small molecules or, or monoclonal antibodies that target a single cytokine at a time. So that's the advantage of these cells, that they're able to handle a multimodal immune activation setup. We realized quite early on that um, that mechanism, which we have um, focused on in GVHD, also is a driver of uh, the, the number one cause of, of death in COVID-19, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. What's going on there is that the, the virus infects uh, the lining of the respiratory tract and the immune system is very vigorously activated, multiple arms of the immune system, vigorously activated with secretion of multiple cytokines in an attempt to eliminate the virus. And unfortunately, the vigorous immune response results in damage and destruction of the healthy lung tissue by these cytokines. We worked with clinicians at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City uh, in the middle of the, um, the pandemic uh, and under compassionate care uh, with, with FDA uh, approval, we treated um, 12 patients with severe ventilator dependent COVID-19 respiratory distress syndrome, moderate to severe disease for whom there is no other treatment today and where the mortality rate approaches 80% and the likelihood of, of um, coming off a ventilator is less than 10%. And in these 12 patients using the exact same protocol that we are using for GVHD, um, two intravenous doses in the first five days, we were able to show that 75% of the patients came off ventilators within a median of 10 days. So on that basis, we went to the FDA and requested commencement of a randomized control trial, phase three trial um, of, a, of approximately up to 300 patients, one-to-one -one randomization, in order to confirm in a statistical manner these results and be in a position that if, if the results are positive, that we can seek approval from the FDA to, to deliver this product to patients with COVID-19 respiratory distress syndrome. That trial is now up and running. We expect that the uh, uh, total patient recruitment will take about three to four months. Uh, in the meanwhile, we will be having you know, an early interim analyses that um, hopefully will we'll show that the sort of efficacy that we've seen in the pilot study is being replicated. Um, what else do you expect in the future for your product? We have some very important readouts coming up and if, if positive, those will um, put us in a position to launch additional products in the US and in Europe in conditions that are inflammatory in nature, particularly cardiac and pain related. In the shorter term, um, we are looking forward to launching our first product, and that product has the potential to be used broadly in, in acute inflammatory conditions that are life-threatening. GVHD is the first. We hope that COVID-19 is the second. Beyond that, there are other indications that cause acute respiratory distress syndrome, including influenza virus and bacterial infection. And so we will be focusing um, the potential to use stem cell more broadly than just COVID-19 or other conditions of acute inflammatory lung disease. And uh, I think you'll see Mesobots focusing very much on the pulmonary indications beyond what we've just talked about. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us today. Join us next time as we speak to experts in the pharmaceutical industry to get a view on the latest research and technology trends. 